We're back at Still the Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa in time to go through the headlines on the front pages of the national dailies. We have uh, the leadership, the punch in newspaper, the nation newspaper, and the Guardian in tow this morning. Let's uh, get things rolling with a look at the leadership newspaper and the stories on its front page. Um, interesting headlines. The leading one there amid zoning debate in PDP. This is from the leadership newspaper. Amid zoning debate in the PDP, Atiku beats PMB's record attempt at presidency, makes Sith declaration. This is simply saying that um, if you look at the number of times a contestant or an aspirant has made an attempt at president, at the position of president and declared, um, Atiku Abubakar is now on top of that chart. Amid zoning debate in PDP, Atiku beats PMB's record attempt at presidency. Now, the writers to that headline, let's focus on winning elections in 2023, not zoning, Tambuel tells party. Southwest PDP leaders insist on Southern president. Vote wisely, McCarthy Daniels will be urged electorate and regulations guidelines for 2023 polls ready 10 months ahead. INEC. More from the leadership. Electoral Act, Senate to discuss court judgment today. And we have more. A reps grill power minister over poor electricity supply. Reps grill power minister over poor electricity supply. And of course, they're talking about uh, the current state of the nation's power sector uh, with um, epileptic power supply all over the country and regular shutdown of the national grid. I'm sure the shutdown has become... <laughs> um, uh, a word that we are all used to uh, these days. Nigeria to witness agri boom with Dangote's $2.5 billion fertilizer plant, PMB, and we're looking at that later on the program. The president was in Lagos yesterday, and one of the projects he, he inaugurated was the $2.5 billion fertilizer plant by Dangote. In an energy crisis, presidency hits back at PDP, alleges plot to destabilize Nigeria. Energy crisis, presidency hits back at PDP, alleges plot to destabilize Nigeria. Of course, um, the calls on, on by the PDP and warnings uh, by the People's Democratic Party that with the current state of affairs in the country, especially uh, the fuel scarcity, um, the lack of aviation fuel and the high cost of aviation fuel, the high cost of diesel, um, and of course the epileptic power supply, uh, the People's Democratic Party had earlier warned President Muhammadu Buhari and his administration uh, not to be a surprise if they see protests in the country on the scale of the end SARS protests. And of course uh, the presidency has hit back at the party saying that the PDP uh, wants to destabilize Nigeria. Indeed, there were reports that um, some security agencies had placed three governors in Nigeria, one from the north, a very vocal governor from uh, the Middle Belt, and another very vocal governor from Nigeria's south-south region uh, that they have been placed under security watch for, uh, allegedly meeting clandestinely to plot violent protests in a bid to take down the Buhari administration is what some reports had a couple of days ago. More from the leadership newspaper, Nigerians to pay 15% more for DSTV Go TV packages from April 1. And a statement was put out by the organization uh, Digital Satellite Television um, to say that uh, they would have to take their prices up due to um, some factors that they enumerated. And uh, that announcement was shared uh, widely online by Nigerians with lots of comments coming. Oil theft, FG begins probe of operators' accounts to verify claim. Oil theft. FG begins probe of operators' accounts to verify claims. Politicians have failed to engender countries' advancement, or Basiki. Politicians have failed to engender countries' advancement, or Basiki. And there's a beautiful picture on that front page of President Muhammad Buhari. Um, you have his uh, Lagos state governor, um, Babajide Sonwolu, as the president visited uh, Lagos and at the inauguration or the commissioning rather of the um, international terminal, new international terminal at the Mutala Muhammad Airport in Lagos. Let's move over to the Punch newspaper with some interesting headlines on the front page of that publication. The big one there, massive job cut looms, dollar hits 590 naira as forex scarcity bites 
harder. Massive job cut looms, dollar hits 590 naira as forex scarcity bites harder. In the writer so that headlines, we buy over 90% of forex from BDCs. Job losses likely lament manufacturers and uh, banks limit online transactions to $20 per month. Travelers, others patronize BDCs. And of course, it's talking about uh, the state of affairs in the country um, with uh, uh, the Naira falling massively against the dollar and the continued dwindling fortunes of the Naira. Um, you talk about the, uh, the cost of um, petrol and, and diesel with a scarcity that has been with us for some time and the fact that the power supply has been epileptic. You have a lot of uh, businesses now complaining that they cannot continue to keep the operations running with um, diesel or petrol uh, fuel generating sets. And of course, this would also be reflected in job cuts. Apart from that, you have um, the, the banks, you know, restricting the withdrawals on the Naira cards of their cons consumers, or rather their customers who travel abroad overseas to $20 a month. Now, this is a paltry amount, as uh, some uh, experts have said, uh, it's not feasible. And what these travelers are saying is they have to now go to the bureau, the changes or the forex bureaus to get the USD to travel. Um, also, you have from that the BDCs uh, being the source of forex for manufacturers says they can't get this uh, from the banks. But you know, a lot of people have asked, uh, for the guys at the BDCs, uh, the forex bureaus that are um, you know, giving out this, this, these dollars and exchanging and dealing in foreign currency, where are they getting the hard currency from? Um, the dollars, the pounds, and the euros, where are they getting it from? If the banks cannot give these to their customers, where are they getting it from? In some states in the country, you can easily get foreign exchange or you can get foreign currencies, rather, uh, on the streets, in what you call the black market. So how come the banks do not have uh, these foreign currencies? It's a question um, that is still yet to be answered. More from the punch. Sluggish growth, unemployment battling Nigeria's Poverty reduction. This is according to the World Bank and details on page 22 of The Punch. Oil theft, FG probes oil firms over production output others. And we've heard in recent time that over 90% or about 90% of Nigeria's crude oil production is being stolen. We have uh, the likes of Shell declaring force majeure on its production. You have Nigeria unable to meet its OPEC quota. You have Nigeria unable to even supply gas um, to the Western countries. And this has been uh, a concern for a lot. Um, we have the a Nigerian economist and businessman Tony Lumelu lamenting some days ago, in fact, last week, that particular situation. And now it seems that uh, uh, the federal government is set to find out what exactly is going on. But I'm sure that our guest this morning on Off the Press will have his ideas or her ideas about this particular headline. Power Ministry lists obstacles, reps cry excuses for blackout. Of course, the House of Reps are probing uh, the incessant blackouts and the shutdown of the national grid in, in the country. And uh, this is what they're saying. Power Ministry lists obstacles and reps cry excuses for blackout. Um, you can find details of that probe by the House of Reps on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. Tamwell rejects zoning. Southwest PDP insists on Southern on Southern Presidency. Tambwell rejects zoning. Southwest PDP insists on Southern Presidency. Of course, the likes of Aminu Tambwell, uh, Governor of Sakota State, the likes of Atiko Bubukar, uh, former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, interested in becoming the flag bearer of the PDP in the presidential election in 2023. And of course, the agitations from different blocks in the party for a Southern president. You have the likes of Yen Sonwike, uh, one of the leading figures in the People's Democratic Party, calling for um, the South to, to produce a president. Um, of course, you have also uh, the Southeast Bloc of the PDP calling for the South to produce a president, or for the Southeast in particular, uh, to produce a president. And of course, this interest from the North who want to be the flag bearer of the party would always come out to say these things and to also protect their own interests as well. What do they say? The politics is a game of interest. More from uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. Buhari seeks a speedy completion of airport concession on second 
uh, second Abuja runway, uh, Buhari seeks speedy completion of airport concession, second Abuja runway. And uh, whilst uh, commissioning the second of the new um, international terminal of the Murtala Muhammad Airport, the president revealed that um, uh, the concession project of the federal government is still ongoing. Uh, what we hear from the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, uh, is that uh, bids have been received and they are in the stage of receiving bids. And now, after they've completed receiving those bids, they are to go into look at the sealed bids to pick um, the winners for this uh, concessions uh, for management of these uh, federal government-owned airports across the country. And some people have also pointed out that the maintenance has been a major um, Achilles heel as far as public infrastructure, government-owned infrastructure in Nigeria is concerned. And uh, some of these um, commentators are saying that they cannot wait um, for the concession of this new airport. Right now you have the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, which is in charge of the airports in the country uh, that are federally owned. Even the state airports also, uh, we have the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria uh, in charge of these airports, and they also are responsible uh, for the day-to-day -day running of these airports. Um, if the concession pulls through, we'll be seeing this particular new airport being taken over and handled by a concessionee company. And that, of course, will be a welcome development. Maintenance culture has been at Achilles' heel in this part of the world. People have talked about several you know, uh, federal projects that have become moribund. And hopefully, this particular um, new international wing of the Motala Airport will not be the same. More from the punch, FGI's 1.5 trillion Naira loans uh, grants to revive health centers. FGI's 1.5 trillion Naira loans and grants to revive health centers. And of course, I'm sure not a few eyes will be raised or eyebrows will be raised to say loans again. Well, you can read details of these on page seven of this, rather, on page seven of the Punch uh, newspaper. More from that paper, Dangote's $2.5 billion fertilizer plant will boost food production, export, Buhari. Uh, we have more on this if you want to read on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. Obiano's government left a hundred billion naira debt, three hundred million naira cash, says Solodo. I mean, I looked at some of the clips of his interview yesterday, and uh, he had a fallen look. He didn't look too happy uh, when this is uh, the new governor of Anambra State was asked about the state of affairs or financial affairs of his state Anambra, and uh, he had to say, well, he met uh, a few million. A few hundred million naira on ground and over a hundred billion naira in debt and he he looked really sad now a lot of people have come out to compare to do some analysis on this and they've been comparing what the former the previous governor of um, anambra state in the mode of a person of uh, uh, governor peter b um, left in the coffers of anambra state peter b said left about 80 something a billion Naira. Out of that, uh, according to the reports, you have seven billion naira in cash, while the rest, you know, was not in cash. And um, they've, they're asking, what did Willie Obiano do with the money? Now, supporters of Governor Willie Obiano have come out and rushed to his defense to point out that he built a new airport. Um, as, par, as, par, as well as other uh, projects in that state. So that's uh, what that story is about. More uh, from The Punch. Bamiche, Lagos BRT, driver remanded for rape and murder. And this is um, a story that we hear at Plus TV, and of course, the entire country is interested in to see justice uh, for Bamiche. We'll keep following that one. Akira Dolu or Yetola condemn protests. Hoodlums dump sacrifice at O. A U or Akere Dolu or Yetola condemn protests. Hoodlums dump sacrifice at O A U. And of course, yesterday we brought you uh, some information that uh, you had protests at the Obafemi Awolowo University by the indigents of Ilefe uh, calling on that institution to produce a vice chancellor from the host communities. And you, of course, you had the deity and fetish, fetish things being seen right there. It's interesting that the paper describes them as hooglums. Details on page nine. Kaduna attack. Police confirmed 34 killed, 200 houses burned. Uh, curfew stays. Of course, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rufai, has placed a curfew on some communities affected by violence, uh, killings, and destruction. Uh, the police are saying 34 have been killed in a recent attack. The governor is saying that the curfew is still in place. Really sad uh, developments in 
in Kaduna State, hopefully we see an uh, improvement in the situation. Really dangerous times um, for that part of the country. Mother, son arrested for abducting, raping AKT SS3 student for three years. This was also widely spread and commented on on, on social media. Really, really sad story um, and really hard wrenching story let's move on to the next uh, newspaper the nation uh with the following headlines An inherited 100 billion naira debt says solido treasury pathetic that's the word he used in describing the treasury he was really sad uh, really sad in that interview nba warns against reckless court ruling senate to debate verdict akir dolu decries invasion of oau by traditionalists Oyatola met 200 billion naira debt, says DMO. Um, that's talking about the list of um, states and the debts that they all released by the Debt Management Office, making uh, a raising a concern right there. More from the nation newspaper PDP quakes of our zoning. Let's focus on getting power, says Tamwal, a party Southwest leaders insist on partnership. Let's move on to The Guardian uh, this morning. And The Guardian has some interesting uh, headlines. They go with a big one. Uh, the banner headline there, APC, throws uh, screening open to all chairmanship as parents. Fierce exclusion could lead to litigations. Yari warns President Buhari against imposition and party to rake in one billion naira from sale of forms. Interesting. We have both from the paper. Southwest PDP leaders insist next president must come from South. FG hails Dangote, hopeful of $400 million inflow from fertilizer export. A truck has threatened to increase holiday charges over diesel crisis. And of course, at the bottom of that front page, get power before sharing it, Tambo tells PDP. Quite interesting. And at this point, we'd like to welcome our guest, an analyst on the uh, segment this morning, Ezekiel Inyaitok, is a public affairs analyst, and we're glad to say welcome to him. Good morning, Ezekiel Inyaitok, and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Now it is you and I. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Looking quite bright this morning, and I, I, I do trust that you have power supply where you are. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> you know, we are local generators, uh, so we always have power. Either the generator or the inverter. Then when NEPA comes, we're like, ooh, up NEPA, but when they go, we take care of ourselves. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. All right, let, let's start with stories from the front page of The Guardian. Um, the All Progressives Congress is said by the party to be throwing uh, its screening uh, open to aspirants from all parts of the country. Um, is, is this a good decision, or you think the party is just trying, as the paper is saying, uh, to avoid litigation? You know, when people believe that things can always be done, it's a very silly way to think, in my opinion. You know, it said that a man who fails to plan is planning to fail. For seven years, you've been in the seat of power, and you are not able to get yourself together. And then you think that for seven days, in seven days, you get that done. It's not going to happen. Things don't work that way, you know? And that is where you, it shows the way you run the, 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 the economy. It shows the way you run the country because it's about a mindset, you know, situation. And it's, it's, I find it very frustrating. Many times I actually do wish that I was in the APC, you know, because they really need people who, 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 are, who have the capacity to think without being afraid of anybody. You know, one of the things that people don't know about me is that I have never accepted any appointment in my life, never. Because to me, the day you accept an appointment, you are gauged, you are caged. And they say it's bad manners to eat, to talk while you are eating. So, but I believe that there are people of integrity in that party that can stand up and say, this is not okay. Everybody just looks at Mr. President, whatever the president, and it is, it's a very... Let me use that word again, silly way to run any system whatsoever. Again, you know that you should know as a politician that any man that is doing a second term will not be respected because they are just counting the days. In your first term, you know, people are afraid that you might just come back so they behave themselves. But as of today, anybody can call the president's bluff. They can't. And then you build your system on a man that is exiting. 
right as soon as Mr. President got the second term, APC would have started internal transition, building an alternate platform of influence, either around the people or around the system. Instead of, oh, the president, the president say, right now, the president can say something and somebody say, excuse me, please, 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 this is democracy. He has one vote. I have one vote. So, and that is what APC is facing today. Right down to the wire, they were like still Mr. President. Mr. And then they are realizing that even the Senate can say, Mr. President, please, please, please. No, we're not deleting that part. That is the Senate, the National Assembly. They can tell Mr. President, please, please, please. And then the party elders are starting to tell him, you want to impose somebody on us? The governors are getting into one, one um, uh, group. And then the stakeholders are getting... So there are, this, is, this cacophony of voices. And it will only take God for APC to come through this. And that's for one reason. They refuse to plan while it was day. That's what Jesus said. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night comes when no man can walk. And I'm afraid that the night is fast approaching for the APC. And that their convention, I don't know how it's going to be. But I just want to pray that for the sake of the good people within the party, that it will not be as terrible as I envisage. Hmm. Indeed, you see, you asked a very important question, Ezekiel, and I took, um, how do you plan a convention in seven days? Um, <laughs> let's see how it goes. Um, but the all PDP, the People's Democratic Party, and its um, national chairman, uh, Iocha, you had thrown uh, a challenge to the All Progressives Congress in his acceptance speech, his inaugural address, uh, to say that um, he dares them to hold a, con a convention, and he was sure uh, they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to hold one. So let's see how that goes. But talking about the People's Democratic Party, we have, um, we'll look at what is uh, on the front page of the Guardian, and then move to the nation so that we can take both of them, and then you comment on it. Uh, Tambwal, Aminu Tambwal, governor of South Dakota State and uh, lead, a leading figure in, in the party, in the, P, in the uh, PDP Governors Forum, uh, is saying that uh, get power before sharing it. That's what he's telling his party. Get power first, then you think about uh, how to share it. Now, if we move to the nation newspaper, the big story there, uh, PDP quakes over zoning. That's a nation a newspaper. PDP a quakes over zoning, and it has these writers. Let's focus on getting power Power, says Tambuol, and party Southwest leaders insist on power shift. So what are your thoughts on what's playing out in the People's Democratic Party with the zoning talk and the likes of Atiko and Tambuol coming up let me, to say? Let, let, me, let me leak a secret. I think that the prayers of Nigerians over the years is coming to pass. There's, you know, I'm Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is a prophet, okay? And I think that's why my father gave me that name, you know, and it also means the strength of God. So, you see, the APC and the PDP have held Nigerians spellbound to the point where you actually think you don't have an option. But they are both getting demystified. They are both getting demystified. I say this, and I say it again. For a man like Alaji Kwan Kwaso to leave the PDP and take an alternate platform. That guy is not a new fight. There is a grand plan for the third force. You know, people just think that the third force means, oh, everybody will move into one vehicle and move on. Guy, just relax. I can tell you this for free. Things are getting done in pocket and it should be that way. And at the fullness of time, there's going to be a convergence. ADC is already being adopted by major parties to form a major plank. I know that my friend, Wale Adewale, is speaking SDP and is forming a major plank. Uh, flank. I know that Alaji Kwankwaso is taking the NNPP and forming a major flank. I can tell you this for free, that as time goes on, each of them is going to sensitize the public on the fact that, look, this old order needs to give way to a new order. So there is not one voice, it is several voices. As time goes on, these several voices are going to come with a new message and distill into one, and Nigerians are going to have an alternative to APC and PDP. When everyone just came, oh, the time is too short, 
I, I laugh at them. I tell you this, I've said it before. The man in power does a marathon. He has the resources. He has the power. He has everything. But the opposition will always do a dash. It's always a strike. Around from September, not even uh, this next uh, April, May. No, 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 no. They are going to go their ways. But from September, you start to see voices coming together, Nigerians setting agenda, profiling what they want, the people having more voice, and then there'll be better alignment that will crystallize around December. And by January, before February, you see a formidable force that is going to give Nigerians a, a credible alternative. While that is going on, APC and PDP will be busy fighting all sorts of things. They will see the handwriting on the wall and they will start coming nocturnally to these new places to say, look, you know, we can't be in front, just find accommodation for us. I tell Nigerians, and I speak as somebody who cares about this country, it's not about politics, that there has to be a new sound, a new music, a new hope for Nigerians. We can't continue this way again. All right. Uh, if if you're proven right, uh, Prophet Ezekiel, I'm sure that you'll begin to give um, Reverend Father Mbaka a run for his money. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Reverend Father Mbaka, but you know, the, the gospel runs in dispensation. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And maybe his dispensation is over. Maybe he's still on. <laughs> God knows. At the end, we will know who, know. who is who. Okay, fantastic. But, but um, looking at the... the the issues with the um, two leading parties in the country, the ruling All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party. Um, we have this zoning arrangement, this zoning formula, and we have um, a sort of unwritten uh, constitution or written arrangement rather that, you know, it should put tape between North and South. Um, are these parties doing the wise and the smart thing, uh, smart thing uh, by not coming out to say we're zoning the presidency to this part of the country at this point because i mean for what tambwal is saying let's uh, let everybody contest first and we think about zoning later in other words if a northerner wins the presidential ticket of the pdp then it's zoned to the north and um, we have the likes of uh body george saying tambwal's position is putting the cart before the horse he's saying it's illogical it's untenable um the southwestern block of the pdp is also saying that the southwest home supports that the next president should come from the south are, are, are these parties doing the right thing in your opinion in leaving it open for now especially I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something for free nigerians need to know that know something called politics it's like the law the law is not morality the law is about principles and processes. I'm not one, I'm not a lawyer, but I have been schooled by lawyers to tell you that the law operates on certain fundamentals and it is not sentimental, it's not morality. That is why you can see a judge know that John, uh, you know, a, a man committed a crime. But unfortunately, his people have not been able to do the good job of proving beyond reasonable doubt. And a man is entitled to something, but unfortunately his lawyer did not plead. And the law does not give you what you did not ask for. O.J. Simpson was a good case. Everybody knew that this guy was guilty, but they just could not fix it. And a smart lawyer, what about it? If it does not fit, then it should be exited. Okay? Coming back to politics. Politics is a game of numbers. Politics is not morality. Parties are in it to win. They are not in it to be religious. They are not in it to be moral. They are not in it to be this. That is not the expectation of politics. So PDP is looking at something. They say, look, if it goes to the South, is it wise for us to get somebody from the South? What do we do? How can, if we get another Northern president, how can we pacify the South? Okay, they start to engage, they start to debate, they start to talk. And they, it's a game of numbers. I'll tell you for free in Akwaibom State, I'm contesting the governorship of Akwaibom State. And... 
Everybody said, oh, let it go to the Uyo Senatorial District. I am saying with them, yes, PDP, APC, all of you, pick from Uyo Senatorial District. God help you. I am from Ikodekpene Senatorial District. One day you wake up and discover that everybody is sharing the vote from Uyo Senatorial District, and a strong candidate comes from Ikodekpene Senatorial District. He's more likely to get the bulk of his people if he presents a good agenda, and then the a kept senatorial district whom you are telling will have to wait for another 16 years they are looking at that and say look this thing has gone through the three senatorial district mm. it is complete so now the point is whoever has the capacity let him pick it now all i need to do is convince the people that i have a good agenda and i mean well and i'm serious and what's going to happen i'm going to take my senatorial district after taking my central district i'm going to now go to a to shop with them I leave you completely out. Still, I'll get some votes. So what happens is that I have two senatorial districts, and Uyo has one senatorial district where all the candidates are fighting for the votes of that senatorial district. When this happens, you start to see Uyo people or Uyo say the parties starting to think, wow, if this happens, should we stick to zoning? Should we not stick to zoning? So zoning is a matter of convenience, and it is a tool that is brought by politicians to suit what they want. Mm, in interesting. Kapoibom, I'll tell you, I wish I, would, I wish I could just do some mathematics, but time will not allow. But trust me, the issue of zoning is going to remain something unresolved within the PDP because they want to take power as a result. They are waiting to see where APC is going, and then they will now look for an alternate way to counter them and get more votes. And once that is done, they will pacify the other zones by making sure that they get into negotiations and give them things that will make them to be happy. For yeah. instance, if I'm the president, I can give your zone, you know, the Minister of uh, Works, I'll give the Minister of Power, I'll give the Petroleum Ministry. By the time I give you one, two, three, four things, you're like, okay, that sounds good enough. And um, it's negotiation. That's what politics is. Interesting. Interesting times, and uh, we'll wait to see what plays out as far as the 2023 presidency is concerned. Um, but but let, let us go back to um, an interview granted yesterday by the uh, the brand new Tiaraba governor of Anambra uh, State, uh, Chukuma Chao Solido, professor, um, who revealed that um, in a very, very sad, he was really, looked really sad, uh, that um, he met uh, a pathetic st treasury in, in, in his state. Um, he was asked how much he, he met on ground and he talked about the state of affairs financially and he said he met a few hundred uh, million naira in the treasury cash uh, in the treasury of uh, Anambra state you know the speculation is, is, is suspicion is that that's between three to four hundred million naira but he also said uh, that he bet a debt of over a hundred billion naira on the ground and your thoughts on this especially as this is the state the Anambra yes. state of Peter Obi. Yes. It, it's it's an area I have very strong opinion on because I want to tell Nigeria and, and that's that's from the front page of the nation it's about sorry to interrupt you yes. that yeah. yes the first thing is that I feel a little disappointed why do I feel a, a little disappointed I architect Nyaito am not as close to the system as he was to that system I have an idea, not less than 60-70% of the state of economy of Akwaibom State, I have. Okay. Gone to debt management office, I've gone to the Federal Minister of Finance, Accountant General's office, budget is doing a good job. I have done a profiling of the affairs of my state. I don't know certain details, I will never know, but I cannot come today and be surprised at what I see. And that's because for him, he should not be surprised. He should have known the state of affairs. These things are not rocket science. There's nothing you are seeing now that you couldn't have seen a good part of it, 70% of it. The debt of Anambra State is there in debt management office. It's there. If you go to the Federal Minister of Finance, you'll get it. You go to Accountant General's office, you'll get it. You get to, you know, the, you know even World Bank. Also has these mm. figures. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think it was more of more of um, you know um, uh, sadness than surprise because the figures no, were no, recently no, released no, by the dead man bill office are out there. No, you know, no, this no, week. no. The days of sadness was before campaign. When he saw them, those are the days you would have been sad. You can't be sad today. Today is to walk and address the situation. 
Soludo, I've had so much confidence in him. He shouldn't start this way. He shouldn't. He should say, well, the situation is pathetic and he's no longer emotional because he's known it a long time ago. But an umbrarian, we've got to work. That is why when he was doing all those flamboyant campaigns, he should have stopped it because the money had to come from somewhere. When I go with three cars, people are like, you want to be a governor, you're going with just three cars. I said, yes, because I alone talk to you. These three people are just my media people. Why would I bring 100 people from Ikonepene to go to Eket to talk to 50 people? It doesn't make sense. And I moved that same convoy. When I get there, only me talks to you people. Get good security and then go meet the people, do town hall, keep the cost low. That's why I'm so, so surprised that people are running these campaigns with all these flamboyance, uniforms and everything. And I ask, do these people know the state of the economy of the state they want to campaign to lead? They don't know. They don't know the state of the economy. If not so, they will not have the long convoys at a time like this that the cost of fuel is so much. Who is fueling these cars? Who is buying all these uniforms? Who is hiring all these people, the crowds, the pulses, to do what? INEC should come in at this point and save this country and stop all these rallies and limit politicians to town hall meetings, which is what I'm doing. Yesterday, I was under the tree for four hours talking to close to 200 of my coordinators. I went with only two vehicles, my key staff and my whatever. We were there for four hours talking. Eight o'clock. The person next door didn't even know what was going on. That is a man who knows what he's in for. I can waste money. When you are wasteful when you are campaigning, how can you be prudent when you get on the seat? And INEC has to come out hard and redefine campaigns because Nigeria is in a dire strait and we need people who understand what they are going in for. We all have this mindset that governance is so much because every governor, even though they are not his last second, was moving with large convoys and making it look like the whole state was okay. Meanwhile, you had only 300 million in your covers <laughs> and then you have a dead body of over 100 billion. In a quiet bomb state, what is the situation? We've got to be sober. Everybody seeking an office of the governor has to ex exhibit a certain level of sobriety, knowing that things are not okay. Industries are shutting down. Where will your internally generated revenue come from? What is your plan? What is your strategy? Do more of talking, town hall meetings, engage the people, answer questions, spend time with them, and leave these rallies and all this paraphernalia. It means you don't even know what you are in for. You are going for a burial of a young child and you are going with a band. Are you okay? It's, looking, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's very interesting, um, and of course, um, you're talking about campaign financing. Uh, uh, that's something that needs to be looked into. I know you're talking from experience, from what you've seen. Um, but, but I hope that the people who see you coming with two cars alone will not feel that um, you don't want to give them. <laughs> you don't like spending money, like they, they said to Solodor when he said he was going to have a small... Uh, a small um, uh, swearing in ceremony because people want to see big things, you know, they want to see flamboyance and say, Aha, you're a big man. And then you. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very important question and it's a mindset that God is helping us to address in a quiet bomb state. You see, you need somebody who, need, who has to tell you that every fuel that is bought is money that could have been used to pay you your salary or your gratuity, or your pension. Every uniform that is bought, where is it from? It's either private or government. If it is government, that what you are clapping for is the industry that should have been in your locality to employ your children. It is the health facility that should have been in your facility. It is the water that should have been in your facility. We are enlightening for the first time, sir. I've done 28 of 31 local governments. The least we spent anywhere was three hours. Yesterday was four and a half hours. People are asking questions. And people, even the people, I said, I'll pay your transport. At the end of the day, for the first time, they say, sir, we can afford to pay the transport back. Don't pay that transport. Okay. We can afford to do this. We didn't know it this way. We didn't think of it. For us, it is worth, let's get what we can while we can. But right. knowing that, like, you know, knowing that you are saving it to give us a better future 
we didn't think this way. God bless you. This is, this is, is quite, it's quite interesting. Hopefully, we can, we can have this replicated on a larger scale across the country um, and maybe won't have stomach infrastructure politics <laughs> again. Um, but I, I want to thank you very much for your time, for joining us this morning, and for delivering, as always, uh, Ezekiel. Yeah, I took, uh, we call him Prophet Ezekiel. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you, sir. That's what uh, Reverend calls me. Wow, fantastic. All right, uh, we, we'll be back to look at um, very important issues. We have two uh, guests on standby for two topics, but let's look at what happened today in history, after which we dive into our first major conversation. So watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.